So, we've got eyes on ice on. Is it going to hang together? Is it going to break up? There was some a paper out over the scientific paper out over the summer saying that comet ice on was was going to break up and then it was going to start dropping down. They used some wonderful data to support it. And what did we find? Well, first, comet ice on is not going to pass close to Earth. It's not going to get anywhere near Earth. It's not going to even closer to Earth than Venus gets. Venus gets closer than Ison will get. But it did actually pass very close to Mars uh, in October. And we have missions to Mars. Uh, here is one. This is a self-portrait of the rover Curiosity. And you say, well, wait a minute. Curiosity is meant to look at the ground. It's, you know, it's meant to explore. It can't do astronomical observations. Wrong. Curiosity did an amazing astronomical observation. It looked at a solar eclipse from Mars. This is a solar eclipse, the Martian moon Phobos, passing in front of the sun as seen by Curiosity. And I have to give the, the Curiosity team mega kudos for this because they are able to position Curiosity in that bright spot on the surface of Mars to be able to see Phobos pass across the sun. So Curiosity can do a little bit of astron astronomical observations, not just look at rocks on the surface of Mars. And so people went crazy thinking, wow, what would it really look like if you were on the surface of Mars and you got the Martian, uh, Mar Martian terrain here and you could set ice on up in the sky when it's only 7 million kilometers, or, um, 7 million miles away. Um, or even you could possibly have both Earth and ice on up above the uh, uh, above uh, above the horizon at the same time didn't happen. Sorry. Um, while Curiosity has the capability to see the sun, which is a really bright object, it did not have the sensitivity to see comet Ison, and particularly since comet Ison was nowhere near as bright as people had hoped it might be, uh, even from uh, the seven million miles away on Mars. However. There was a telescope on Mars capable of it. Um, it is the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, which is the largest telescope ever launched into deep space. It's a half meter telescope. And its job is to survey Mars, look down at it, and really get the, the high resolution images of the Mars, sur Mars surface. And so you could imagine taking that telescope and pointing it up at the sky and observing ice on. Now, it's a little bit like taking Landsat and repurposing it to do what Hubble does. But, you know, these guys are smart and they're able to do it. And they're able to get a picture of Ison. Are you ready for it? There it is. Yeah, uh, it's a little underwhelming. But they were actually able to measure, uh, to, to, to get a picture of Ison from Mars. Now, they were conservative. They didn't want to overexpose it. They were trying to see if it was large enough to, to fill, uh, fill a few pixels. And they didn't want, they wanted to actually see just the nucleus. They didn't want to see the coma. Uh, this is why this is a relatively faint image. Uh, it turns out that the scale of pixel at this distance was about eight kilometers per pixel. All right? And it, this uh, image sh shows that, unfortunately, Ison is smaller than that. The estimate for the size of Ison is about three miles across. All right, so we didn't show that, but it also got us a little worried that maybe it is too small, because a larger comet is more likely to survive perihelion passage. All right, so was Ison breaking up? We had this paper out there saying it was going to break up. Fortunately, Hubble came through on October 9th and took this image, uh, and we can definitively say with Hubble's resolution that comet Ison was not breaking up. Okay, a comet Ison is held together, uh, and you see this beautiful picture. So we've been watching Ison for several months now, and I found this beautiful series of images uh, from this uh, photographer in England named Damien Peach. And so here it is in March of 2013. You can see how faint it is there. And again, in September, it gets a little bit brighter there. And then in September 24th, and then you get October 11th, and it starts looking really cool. So you can see what the amateur astronomers have been doing following it there. The other thing you can see is that it's green. Now, is this a trick of, what their, uh, of, of their photography? No, it actually is green. Lots of comets are green. And the reason is because there is cyanogen and uh, diatomic carbon in the gases coming out from the, from the comet. And when hit with sunlight, they glow a green color. 
Okay, when you hit them with, with high energy uh, sunlight, they glow a green color. All right, well, diatomic carbon is just C2. But cyanogen, that's in the cyanide family. Cyanide in the comet. Quick, we better get our comet pills so that we'll be safe. Um, this is not a joke. This is from 1910 when Comet Halley came through and Earth was going to pass right through the tail of Comet Halley. And there was, of course, there is hydrogen cyanide, there is cyanogen in the tail. Um, and so hucksters uh, went around selling anti-comet pills for only 25 cents each. And 25 cents in 1910 was a serious amount of money. Um, and people, of course, they also sold gas masks and anti-comet umbrellas or anything to save you from these noxious gases. Um, and of course, everybody remembers the millions of people who did not die during the uh, passage of Comet Halley in 1910. The uh, gases in the comet tail are so diffuse, they have no impact whatsoever. So you do not need to get your comet pills this year or any other year. I got one more cool pick for you. This is from October 24th. Um, this is uh, Comet Ison and this is Galaxy Messier 95. Really cool, another pick from uh, Damien Peach. Uh, you can find so many cool ISON images out there. Um, I, can, I can give a whole lecture just talking about the cool picks, but there's a lot out there. The internet has made it fantastic for doing research on these comets. Uh, one last thing is something that was pointed out this weekend, that Comet Ison right now is not the brightest comet in the sky. There are four comets up in the morning, uh, and the brightest one is actually another comet, Lovejoy, uh, discovered by the same uh, uh, astronomer, Terry Lovejoy, but this is C2013R1 Lovejoy, which was only discovered in September, has brightened really quickly, and currently, um, as of November 7th, it was slightly brighter than Ison, although we expect and hope that Ison, since it's a sun grazer, will, will, will ramp up its brightness really quickly. Lovejoy is not a sun grazer and will not be, again, that much brighter over the next few few weeks. So if you're looking for comets, now's a really good time if you've got a small telescope or binoculars. Hopefully in December you can use the you can use the naked eye. Uh, here is a chart. Um, I put this in my slides so that people can look at it and, uh, and freeze frame the webcast and go, oh, ah, most of you this means nothing to you. It's passing by Virgo, then going through Serpens, and up here by Hercules. What you really want to know is where do I look in the sky at at what time? Well, the point is, is in December, you want to look in the morning about 30 minutes before sunrise. This is from our friends at Sky and Telescope. In the east, southeast, it will slowly get higher in the sky. It rises about 10 degrees each week, getting high in the sky. Hopefully, in the first two weeks, you'll be able to see some beautiful stuff. Again, the moon is going to get out of the way really quickly. Um, it's, it's new moon on December 2nd, so it's going to cooperate. Morning is going to be the best time, unfortunately, for you evening people. Us morning people are, are happy. Uh, morning will be the best time to see Comet Ison. You can, however, due to the geometry, also see it at night um, after sunset, um, and it will slowly rise in the sky um, over the course of two weeks afterwards. It doesn't get as higher in the sky uh, after sunset. It gets higher in the, in, in, in the morning. Um, pay no attention to these magnitude estimates. They are all um, hypothesized from previously, and I wouldn't believe them at all. Uh, this was made a long time ago. So, if you want to observe Comet Ison, uh, mid to late November, it may be visible before dawn. However, the full moon on November 17th does get in the way. All right, November 28th is when it's closest to the sun, and you should uh, stop eating turkey for just a little bit, go on the internet, find out, did it survive perihelion, go to the Soho website, see if they've got a cool movie like they did for Lovejoy. You know people are gonna be, are gonna be processing that really quickly. Early to mid-December, just before dawn and just after sunset. Again, the new moon on December 2nd is your friend, um, but it will probably fade away before the holidays, uh, looking at the plots, estimates of somewhere around December 20th. How, however, the thing is, we have no idea what's going to happen at perihelion. It could brighten dramatically at perihelion. It could break up at perihelion. Okay, Pay attention um, to, to what's going on uh, in order to figure that out. On December 26th, it will actually be closest to Earth, but as I said, it'll be about 40 million miles away, um, and it will have faded and won't be naked eye visible. It will still be visible in binoculars and small telescopes at that time, cross fingers. 
For the observing, you will make sure you want a dark site. You don't want a lot of street lights in your eyes, even though it's going to be sun, sunrise and et cetera, and twilight. Um, and you definitely want a clear horizon. You're trying to get to those 10 degrees, 20 degrees off the horizon. You've got a lot of trees and buildings in your, in your way. You're not going to see it, right? Uh, dress warm, bring hot chocolate, it will be December. I don't care if it's the evening in December, hot chocolate is always good for observing or whatever hot beverage you, you so desire. Um, and recognize, of course, that you're always at the mercy of weather and clouds. For updated information, you can go on the internet and do searches, but you can, of course, talk to the local astronomy clubs. There are three around the Baltimore area, Hartford, Westminster, and Howard, and they all decided to use the same web address format. HowardAstro.org, WestminsterAstro.org, and uh, HartfordAstro, and HowardAstro.org. So it's really easy to remember. Um, go to their websites. If they are doing special events, uh, they're wonderful people. They love sharing their knowledge of the sky. And so I'm asked, where are you going to be for looking at ISON? Where is the best place? Well, I'm actually going to be here. Um, I got a gig with a cruise line where I get to give lectures on astronomy on a cruise ship. And they saw that Comet Ison was going to make a passage and they said, hey, we'd love to have an astronomer on board. So I'm going to be on the Canary Island Serenade, which goes from Lisbon to the Canary Islands to Casablanca through the Straits of Gibraltar, finishes in Barcelona. And I will have a fantastic horizon of the Pacific Ocean uh, to, my, uh, to my west for, uh, for, for uh, sunset observing. Uh, unfortunately, not everybody can be on there, so do your best to find a good horizon. Uh, resources to help you, Sky and Telescope is always wonderful. Universe Today is good, they've got some great stuff. Sometimes hard to find it on their website, but if you do a, a search and uh, you'll and come up with a lot of Universe Today things. NASA has the Comet Ison Observing Campaign, you can find them, the CIOC. Uh, and the most important thing is going to be the blogs because the information is going to be changing, changing, changing. You're going to want to keep up with it. We have the ISON blog on Hubble site. There is Waiting for ISON. There's the Sky Live. And the CIOC has their own blog. Finding those blogs is really cool. Uh, you'll find out the new information. Now, of course, I can't leave you with all these words. i got to leave you with one last co cool comment pick. And this is another picture of Comet Lovejoy from 2011. And it's really cool because this pic was taken from the International Space Station. All right. So do we have any questions about all the various comets and, and uh, up occurrences coming up? Yes? So, um, we should thank Neptune for sending all objects to become short-term objects short 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 Exactly. All hail Neptune. Neptune is the not the, the giver of the seas, but also uh, the giver of comets, which actually might actually be the giver of the seas because the water on Earth might come from actually been bombardment by from by comets. So, what, what should, who should be thanked for sending long-term objects? Ah, there we go. Okay, fantastic. I didn't have time to go through that, but the long-term, long-period comets um, are due to Jupiter. So. Um, you can't form as far out as the, uh, the, the comets out here, at, all the way out at the edges of the Oort cloud. Instead, we believe all these comets form in the inner solar system from what we call the ice line outward, which is where ices can form in the solar nebula, right? Because up close to the hot sun, you can't form ices. But at some point, it gets cold enough, you can start to form ices. And you'll form all these cometary nuclei type objects from there on out. And then, you know, you'll lose density and, and you won't be able to form many out here. So many of these get hit, by, get, go past Jupiter, and Jupiter, with its large, giant mass, shoots them way out into the Oort cloud. All right? and so the idea is that the long period comets formed actually near the inner solar system, but were then thrust out by Jupiter's gravity during the formation of the solar system. And the short period comets weren't never migrated in close enough to Jupiter. They stayed out here, and they stayed around, and they migrated in later. So the ones that migrated quickly got shot out and formed this giant cloud of, or cloud of comets. Good question. Thank you. I should have, you know, I, 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 your kind of thing, I would, have, I would have planted that question had I thought of it. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. So hopefully.